Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at free surface, and so we're going to be talking in particularly about the theory of free surface. So, um, this is a vessel. Uh, the gray part is the vessel, the blue part is a tank, and that tank could be full or empty. And uh, if that's the case, uh, there's going to be no free surface, okay? So this is going to be a vessel rolling. And as you see here, as this vessel's rolling, okay, uh, the center of gravity here for the overall vessel is on the center line. And the center of gravity, this little G here, is for this tank, okay? So because the tank is full, or if it was empty, the center of gravity of the tank does not change, and nor does the center of gravity of the overall vessel change. So here's the center of gravity of the vessel. You can see that uh, that is acting downward. And here is the center of buoyancy of the vessel, the overall center of the buoyancy, that is acting upward. And they're separated by a distance, that's GZ. That's the writing arm. So if we took the, the displacement of the vessel, we multiplied it by the writing arm, that would be the writing moment. So you can see here that this vessel um, is, uh, has no free surface and G, and, but neither one of those Gs is moving. And you can see that the vessel will roll from one side to the other. Okay, and uh, there you can see your uh, vessel rolling to the port side if you're looking at it from the stern, and your GZ increasing and decreasing, and there we go. Now what we're going to do is, um, we're going to, this is an image right from your book. I don't remember what page it's on, but this explains what's going on with uh, the virtual center of gravity uh, and off-center weight. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct this slide with animation step by step. So, here's a tank that has, that is slack. It's not full and it's not empty. And because of that, the surface is going to be f free to move, okay? This is the overall center of gravity of the vessel, and uh, this is the center of gravity of this one particular tank, which at the moment, because the liquid is equally distributed across the center line, is on the center line. So now what's going to happen is we're going to start to uh, roll this vessel, and we'll see what happens. So as the vessel's rolling, you can see that the center of gravity of the liquid in the tank has shifted to the low side. So now some of the liquid on this side is over here. And that's done a couple of things. What it's done is uh, uh, it's moved the center of gravity of the overall vessel from G to G prime. Now, it's interesting to note that not only did G prime slide over laterally, but I don't know if you can see here, it went up just a little bit. And the reason it went up just a little bit is because G on this side went from here. It went sideways, but it also went vertically a little bit because there's more liquid on this side. And so uh, the overall center of gravity is going to follow a shift. And the, since that shift went laterally, transversely, and slightly up, this is going to go transversely and slightly up. But this is the center of gravity of the vessel that's changing as a result of this free surface. Okay, that's where it would have been if the vessel didn't, if this tank didn't have any free surface, and this is where it is now as a result of that. Now we're going to see it roll from side to side. Okay, you can see as the vessel inclines more, little g goes farther to starboard. Okay, all right, we'll watch that again. Okay, so you can see little g is going to starboard, big g is following it. Now the vessel's rolling back, little g is coming back towards the center line. And big G is following it, and now it's going over to the other side. Now you might also note here that the beam is actually increasing in the tank as the vessel rolls, okay? At least under these conditions. Okay, now let's now we're gonna add another concept. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add the center of buoyancy. So again, this is gonna be the overall center of gravity of the vessel. This is gonna be the center of gravity of the liquid cargo. And this is going to be the buoyancy of the vessel. And now let's watch what happens when we add that. All right, so what's going on now is the little g is shifted because the vessel's rolling and some of the liquid shifted over. We know that. And that caused the g prime to shift as well. But now since we're putting buoyancy in here, uh, as, the, as the vessel is inclining, okay, here's the underwater shape of the vessel right here. Okay, and as the vessel is inclining, B is moving off the center line. Now here's your shifted G acting downward. Here's your B acting upward. They're separated by a distance, and there is GZ. This distance between the red line and the blue line is GZ. Okay, now if this 
uh, liquid had not moved off center, G would have been here. But now it's here because this little G moved. Well, so now you can see here that the that you now you see your GZ. Well, if there was no free surface, GZ would have been from the blue dot to the blue line. Now it's from the red dot to the blue line. So it's shorter. It's shorter by this distance. Okay. So we have an off center weight. And as a result of that, we have a decrease in GZ. Okay. And if, if you remember from statical stability, uh, off center weight that creates that, that decrease in GZ. Okay. But here's the interesting thing. Um, well, now, now we're going to add another concept. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, so there you can see GZ is increasing as the vessel's rolling, and now it's decreasing as the vessel's coming back to upright. Now it's rolling to the other side. And you can see the GZ increasing, the vessel comes back, and okay, great. So now let's let it add another idea. Okay, so here, oh, wait a minute, let me, let me get that out of your way. Okay, so the only thing that's being added into this slide is this. This is the virtual center of gravity. Now let me explain what's going on here. Where is the center of gravity of this vessel? Okay. Right now, at this moment, where's my little pointer? Okay, right now at this moment, the center of gravity is here. It's been shifted transversely. That's where it would have been if this tank had been uh, full or empty. But since the tank is slack, little g has moved over and big G has moved over as well. So this is actually where, this spot right here is actually where the center of gravity of this vessel is right now. But here's the thing, we are often interested in, we like to think about stability in terms of GM, okay, and uh, G kind of being on the center line. Well here's the thing, this is our GZ, and this is, so this is our GZ, and if, if you notice here, I, geez, I didn't draw GZ here, I drew it up here, okay? And here's what's going on. The center of gravity is actually here, but because GZ is this length, if I slide it up to the spot where uh, this red line intersects the center line, okay, right here, although G is here, the vessel feels like G moved up to here, okay? This is a virtual shift in the center of gravity. This is a virtual shift in the center of gravity. Because this GZ has been reduced by this amount, this is all that's left. And if I slide that up until it intersects the center line, although G is down here, the ship feels as if G is here, okay? And that's useful for us because now we can start to use that in the next slide to calculate how much GM we have left. In fact, G is here, but the vessel feels as if it's here, vertically above G prime, where the G prime line intersects the center line. I've said that a bunch of different ways. I hope one of those ways uh, captured your imagination, okay? So G is here, but the vessel feels like it's there. And so you have this shift of G that is a result of this free surface. Now, that is a virtual vertical shift of G because it didn't actually do that. It went to here, but the ship feels as if it went up, okay? So we can just see that happen going to both sides, okay? And that disappears when the vessel's upright, and then it reappears as soon as the uh, cargo shifts over to the port side. All right, great. The last slide of this series. Now we're going to add M, okay? So, there we go. Vessel's rolling. All right, so you'll notice here that uh, the only thing that's new is M, but now you can see that as the vessel inclines and the little G moves further over, Big G moves further over, and as big G moves further over, this virtual center of gravity moves further up, and it gets closer to M. And so now, we have this transverse shift 
but we can think about it in terms of how the vessel would feel like a vertical shift and now we can evaluate GM okay now, well, I didn't exp I didn't say those words exactly the most eloquently but I hopefully you get the idea okay by drawing this vertical line up the center line this is where the virtual center of gravity is now and now we can evaluate what our GM is okay remaining okay so let's look at that so you see how that that G and M is getting smaller and now it's getting larger as the vessel's coming more to upright and now it's going the same thing's going to happen on the port side as the vessel rolls okay so that is our remaining GM All right, and we can calculate that using the free surface formula, GGO equals RLB cubed over displacement 420. Okay? Whew, that was quite a bit. All right, let's continue on with some other ideas. Oh, that isn't what I wanted to do. Let me put that back. Okay, so... Now, this free surface effect can create negative GM, also virtual lol. We're going to just keep moving on. In your book, you should probably read this page, page 162. These are all important things about how that GGO formula, RLB cubed, is, is uh, uh, the, the variables associated with that. Okay, now, what happens if I have uh, some tanks and I start to put longitudinal divisions in them? So here's a 30-foot tank, okay? And what if I took that tank and I put one longitudinal division down the center of it? Well, that 30-foot tank would be divided into two 15-foot halves. And in this tank, you have some holes down here in the bottom of this division that allow the liquid to move back and forth down here. But if the surface is up here, it'll be separated. It won't be allowed to move from side to side. And here's that same tank, and I put two subdivisions in there. Okay, well, this vessel is 10,000 tons. The length of the tank is 20 feet. The breadth of this tank is 30 feet, and we'll say that R is 1. And this tank, this is the same thing, except now, because we put that in there, it's really one tank, but by putting that, separ that separation in there, it's kind of like two tanks that are 15 feet. And here, it's kind of like three tanks that are, that are 10 feet. So this is our formula. So how are we going to do this now? Well, for this guy, it's just the beam, 30 cubed, okay? And that gives us a GGO of that. For this guy, now it's it's a it's a it's a 15 foot tank. So beam is really 15 cubed, but there's two of them. So we're going to do this formula, and we're going to multiply it by two. All right. So by putting one subdivision in, we went from a GGO of 0.13 to a GGO of 0.032. Okay. So we reduced it. Okay, and if you look at these two numbers, this number here is 75% is, is this, this number is 75% less than this. So now we have three subdiv two subdivisions, three different sort of tanks. And so uh, the B is going to be 10 in this case, not 30. But if I put two, two subdivisions in and I have 10, 10, and 10, it's going to be 10. But now there's three tens, so there I'm going to put that out there in front. So I'm going to... Whatever that calculation is, I'll multiply it by 3, and I get 0 0.012. And you can see that's even uh, less free surface. All right, now, you might say to yourself, well, you know, if I have more liquid in the tank, I should have more free surface. And this is right out of your book as well. And this shows you why that is not the case. So you can look these two pictures. It's the same vessel. This one has more liquid in it this one has less liquid in it okay it turns out though that even though this has more liquid this has less liquid they have the same free surface effect and uh, here's kind of the reason why okay if you have more liquid in here that means that as this thing shifts um, less liquid if I have more liquid here less liquid can shift over to this side before uh, it reaches the top of the tank Okay, and so what that means is that the center of gravity can only shift so far. But if I have less liquid, I can slosh a greater percentage from this side over to here. And the center of gravity of this little tank can move even farther. Okay, but so now what we're going to look at here is we're just going to look at this line of G as it goes up to the center line. This is going to be a little M. We're not thinking, this is not M like metacenter. This was probably more like M like moment, okay? 
And so I have a small weight acting at a long distance versus a large weight acting at a short distance. And it turns out that a, sh uh, a large weight acting at a short distance is equal to a small weight acting at a large distance. So in fact, okay, the, they, they end up uh, creating the same overall free surface effect. So volume of the tank is irrelevant as long as there is some free surface. If the, if the tank is full, there's no free surface. If the tank is empty, there's no free surface. But if the tank is partially filled, it doesn't matter if it's a quarter filled, half filled, three quarters filled. It's going to give all three of those conditions or any other conditions of slack will give exactly the same free surface effect. That's strange, but true. Now, inclining. This is also an interesting thing. So here's the vessel upright. And the breadth of that, of that tank is here. Okay. Uh, the vessel inclines a little bit, and that actually increases the beam. But as it climbs more, the breadth of the tank starts to decrease and then decrease even more. So when we're using this formula, R equals LB cubed divided by displacement of 420, it actually doesn't accurately predict the uh, free surface effect through all angles of inclination. It's really kind of an average value. As the vessel in inclines just a little bit, the B of the tank is actually greater than this. So it underestimates GGO. But as the vessel goes past some degree of inclination, the breadth is really reduced, and now it's overestimating the impact of GGO. So you have to kind of keep that in mind, that as the vessel inclines, the functional breadth or the beam of the tank changes. Okay, So the formula is really just an average value. Okay, Just kind of an interesting distinction. All right. So free surface effect actually increases and then decreases as the vessel inclines. And by the way, uh, there's a term for this called pocketing. So as the vessel inclines, you can see that when the liquid reaches the top of this corner of the tank, it can no longer uh, slide over uh, transversely. And so it begins to pocket. Okay, And as soon as pocketing starts to happen, that's when you start to get the decrease in the breadth or the beam of the tank. So until pocketing, the B is actually increasing. Okay, So upright, as the vessel inclines, B increases until you reach pocketing and then B decreases. Okay, And, uh, and that concludes my explanation of free surface.